Hey, what's up YouTube, Houston here. And for those of you just finding my YouTube channel, welcome. Please remember to hit that subscribe button and that bell. And for those of you that's been following me and supporting me, salute. And for my favorite patrons, always double salute. Now, this video here that I'm about to show you guys is definitely going to put you on a different type of game. And the reason is, is because a lot of people are talking about Navy Federal Pledge Loans, okay? And I made a video uh, going in more details about the Navy Federal Pledge Loans and how to leverage it and stuff like that and some of the lenders. So what I wanted to do was not only update the video, but you should see the original video because I go more in detail. But this video here is going to show you if you're building your credit, rebuilding your credit, or you just really want to put yourself in a position where you're getting anywhere from twenty-five to fifty thousand dollars out of Native Federal, and how to leverage their pledge loan. Okay. Now, understanding that, one of the things I always tell people, it's all about the internal data with uh, internal scoring with Navy Federal. So if you have bad credit, hey, that's okay long as you have a good internal score and they're willing to work with you, all right? And so what do you need to do first? First, you need to become a member, all right? So I made a video on how to become a member. Uh, for those of you that want to see that video, um, um, I'll try to put the link down below. If not, just send a, put it in the comments, hey, can I see that video? But here's the thing about it. It's very easy these days to become a member of Navy Federal, all right? That's the reality of it. It's very easy. Um, one of the things that I would definitely tell you all that you need to pay attention to, because Navy Federal pulls TransUnion FICO 9, and that's a very good thing to know, especially taking advantage of your TransUnion FICO 9, because with the major banks, they're pulling your FICO 8, they're actually even the FICO 10 now. Uh, it's it's starting to, it'll show you a different score. And so if you don't know exactly the difference between your FICO 8, 9, 10, or 5 uh, credit score, because some credit unions pull FICO 5, um, what you need to do is click the link, get your real FICO score, okay? Uh, click the link in the description, get your real FICO score, and make a, make a consultation. I would say schedule a 30-minute consultation, and I will go over you the different FICO scores so you can understand and how to leverage them to your advantage. That being said, looking at the Navy Federal internal scoring, scoring going from 100 to 450, right? And so how to build up this internal scoring with the direct deposits, uh, personal pledge loans, uh, flagship checking accounts. Now, some people have regular checking accounts, and that's okay, but if you really want to position yourself with Navy Federal to have a good uh, internal scoring, I would tell you to get the flagship checking account. Uh, you can get money market accounts, uh, savings accounts, and CDs. Now, here's the interesting thing, talking about these different accounts, here's the interesting thing. If you just become a member of Navy Federal, and you tell them you want to open up a checking account, a savings account and said maybe a money market account or a pledge loan this is what's going to happen they're going to ask you right off the bat do you want a credit card right because you have you just opened up three three or more accounts with them right and because you just opened up three or more accounts with them even if you have a bad credit score and this has been done people that have like 550 credit scores and they just opened up the, three or four of those accounts, they was approved for credit cards. Like 5,000 plus credit cards right off the bat. So uh, when you open up those accounts, they may ask you right off the bat, hey, do you want a credit card with us? And it's, it's because, again, you just qualify for the internal scoring, right? So I usually don't tell people that. Uh, I made it in a, a few other videos, but it does happen. All right. Um, now, having a, a good history with, with them or other banks is really helpful. Utilization, no insufficient funds, uh, on time, and making on-time payments, and then, of course, credit cards. So that's the internal part, 
All right. Now I know you're talking about, okay, what about the pledge loan hack? All right. Stick with me. Here's what you want to do for the pledge loan hack. All right. Once you join Navy Federal, all right, don't open up your pledge loan right away. Do not do that. All right. This is what you want to do. You want to try to find one of these lenders that don't focus on credit score to get a loan because you got you should get a loan uh try to get a loan from two thousand to five thousand right so you have lenders like money mutual um that you can borrow from then you have uh upstart actually upstart i like them because not only do they not really focus on the credit score and they do a soft pull money mutual does a soft pull uh, but the good thing about it, it's it's in all 50 states, just like Money Mutual, okay? So New York, you guys can actually apply for this. Now, Upgrade, uh, they're not operating in New York, and I think it's Connecticut, but they are good lenders as well. But the good thing about, like, Upstart, uh, they're pulling TransUnion FICO 9. Whereas Navy Federal, TransUnion FICO 9, and it's a soft pool here, Right? So you can do pre-quals once you get into Navy Federal. You can do pre-quals on credit cards and stuff like that. Uh, so you know what you qualify for. But talking about hacking the pledge loans, what you need to do is find one of these lenders, okay, that's not going to do a pull, hard pull on your credit that will help you qualify for a loan from 2000 up to 5000 all right? And that, that's very important. Uh, because it's going to help you. So you have Upstart, then you have Opportune. Their loans go from three hundred to ten thousand. Again, Opportune they're they're restricted in terms of these are the states that they're not able to offer a loan in, right? But at the same time, it's much easier to get a loan because it's soft pool as well. So. With the exception of these states here, you may be able to get qualified for a opportune loan. All right. Now, also you have credit loans. Credit loans, um, with the exception of New York and Connecticut, um, if you have bad credit, they loan up to five thousand. All right. The reason I'm telling you to uh, look at these lenders because again. It's no hard inquiry on the credit, so if you're able to get the money, great. Now, once you let's just say you're able to get the five thousand. All right, what you want to do? All right, what you can do is take the money before you open up the pledge loan. Take the money and put it on either the Navy Federal and Rewards card, and because after six months. This here actually turns into a 2000 plus credit credit card, right? Regular credit card, which is the green card, the rewards card, right? So you'll go up to the green card, the rewards card. Now, say that you took the 5000 and put it on there, all right? Then you took a cash advance from there. What I would do, they have the Navy Federal Go card, okay? So this is what that it's an option for you as well. You can take the money as a cash advance from this in rewards, then put it on your prepaid go card, okay? And then take the prepaid go card and put it on the pledge loan. Now you say, well, Houston, that's a lot to do. But I, I understand, but it's just so that you have options. Or again, you can just do it the direct route. Taking that 5,000, two to 5,000, Putting it on the end rewards card, okay? Now, putting it on the end rewards card, then taking it, taking a cash advance and opening up the pledge loan, all right? So that's going to give you, make sure you open up a savings account as well. That's very important because what happens is, what you're going to do, just say that's $2,000, all right? You're going to take $2,000 from your... Um, in your uh, secured card, all right, and put it into the pledge loan. Then you're going to pay that down to about 80%, which is about $400. Again, I have a video that explains it, right? Then you want the pledge loan to string out all the way to 24 months, basically two years. 
And this is one of the things about it in terms of like with pledge loans, people always, they'll have them for six months, maybe nine months, and they'll just pay it off. Don't do that. The reason is you're trying to build a, not only a stronger relationship with Navy Federal, but at the same time, this is going to help you have multiple trade lines on your credit file if you're trying to rebuild your credit or build a new credit, okay? So that's the reason you don't want to do that. Now, that being said, once you pay down that 80%, the 80% of that pledge loan right away, you can do it within the first three days, pay down 80% of it, which leave about $400 on it, okay? That... That leave you at sixteen hundred. That sixteen hundred dollar went into your savings account. You put. You're gonna put that back on to your um, in rewards card. The reason is is because remember this is still a call a credit card. Okay, so it will affect your DTI. So that's the reason you want to do it that way. All right. So you want to put the money back on there. And it now that'll give you two trade lines, right? Or you can take take uh, that money and put it on a Sable card, right? Because you know that in, that uh, Navy Federal Secured card and Rewards card is going to convert to a regular credit card after six months. Well, the Sable one is after four months, right? So with uh, say that you put two to five thousand on it. Sorry, guys, my rabbit is biting at my feet trying to get me to play. So forgive me, um, but. The Sable one, say that you was able to get that loan and put that money on this Sable card. Well, it converts to a regular credit card after four months, and it gives you a, a credit card statement, right, for whatever amount you put on it, all right? Now, since that gives you a credit card statement, make sure that you keep on paying back the loan because the loan that you have is a high interest right so make sure that you have enough money to pay back that loan all right now that being said you have this secured sable card so if you want to have both of them you can do the same thing uh splitting the money up and opening up the sable card as well as the end rewards and then the pledge loan that'll give you three trade lines right now that being said what I would do, excuse me, let me back up, I'm moving too fast. So, so what I would do is I would add other trade lines to help boost up my FICO 9 scoring, okay? Because this is where the money's at. Because with the FICO 9 scoring, not only your, tran your TransUnion FICO 9s, but like uh, with your credit unions, your fintech companies, they're focusing on FICO 9, it's much easier to build, right? So if you have a debit card, now here's another thing that you can also add. You can set up with an extra debit card app or one financial app, and both of those will report all of your debit card transactions. As a trade line with the extra reports to Equifax and Experian. All right. Also adding an authorized user and removing some inquiries would definitely help. You also have Experian Boost. Uh, but with Grow Credit and Perch, if you have uh, subscriptions, car insurance, uh, gym membership, Netflix, Hulu, Spotify, and stuff like that, you can add those on as trade lines and stuff. Right. The reason that I would tell you to be careful, like with the, uh, and I made videos about uh, self, with a uh, self, because some of those type of uh, companies, like they give you low limits, and you don't want low limits because that's calculated in. So when you try to get a higher limit credit card, revolving credit card, they'll always give you low limits. So that's the reason that I'm not talking about like self and stuff like that. Another thing in reference to, I know people may go ask about pledge loan, okay? Not pledge loan, excuse me, Credit Strong. Here's the thing about Credit Strong that most people don't know. If they give you a loan, it's already a maxed out loan, right? And you're paying down that loan because it's already maxed out showing on your credit. So that hurts your debt to income ratio. So I'm not 
knocking those that use it, but I'm just explaining to you when you get this here uh, Credit Strong loan, yes, it's a nice trade line, but it's going to hurt the debt to income ratio. So just keep that in mind, okay? And the debt to income ratio is more important than the trade line. And that's, that's the reality of it, okay? That being said, now, in reference to the pledge loan, you done got the pledge loan set up and everything. Now, those secured cards I just talked to you about, the end rewards uh, card or the uh, saver one card, what you want to do is attach, if you're paying rent, okay, if you're paying rent and you're paying with cash or with money order, stop that, okay? You want to go to a company like Plastic and, or the, there are some other companies like that you see here, uh, but like with plastic, you want to set your uh, end rewards or your Sable card up to it. And then they will send the check out to whoever the person you're paying the rent to. The reason that you want that happening is because then you can uh, set yourself up with one of these rental report companies. And then that's a trade line as well. Okay, so I'm trying to show you how to build your file up, thicken your file up, so that you can start getting larger lines of credit. Okay, this is the whole purpose of this video, N not only to for to get the pledge loan hack, but to also get, make sure you have multiple primary trade lines on your credit file. Besides, uh, if you're an individual that's been paying uh, rent. And you've been in, uh, say, a place for like two years or more. This is also a step to possibly helping you age your credit file as well. Because they're going to report at least two years of back rent on your file, okay? And with the new FICO 10, they're looking at accounts that are two years or newer to determine what your credit score will be as well. So that's very important that you need to understand this. Now... Another credit card that's easy to get uh, when you're rebuilding your credit, it's not a hard inquiry, is the Credit AI, okay, and they give you a $1,500 primary trade line on it. Then you have OpFi. OpFi, they give you $1,000. Then after, I think it's like after six months, it doubles to $2,000, okay? No security deposit, but they do charge an annual fee, okay? But there's no hard pull on your credit score. So, again, having these primary trade lines, revolving trade lines, is what you're going to need for Navy Federal, okay? Especially if you're rebuilding your credit. Now that you have the internal scoring, you have all of these primary trade lines, now it'll make it much easier for you to get higher limits of credit cards from not only Navy Federal, not only are you going to just go after their credit cards, okay? You also can look at a uh, pen fed that uh, pulls uh, Equifax, Equifax FICO 9, okay? So that's the reason that you want to look at some of these companies. Uh, like Upstart Upgrade, TransUnion, uh, but they show you the actual amount of how much you approved for. Um, and once you approve for it, then they put the inquiry on there. But you are able to do a prequal to make sure that you're qualified for it first. All right. Now, in reference to the credit cards, once you have those other credit cards, then I would suggest that you get the Patel 1 and the Patel 2. Again, FICO 9, uh, Experience, Soft Pool. Uh, credit cards going from three hundred up to ten thousand dollars. Okay, they more or less focus on the income that you have going on, how long you've been on your job, and the education. Okay, instead of the credit score, that's the reason that I'm trying to show you the easier way, not only to build up your credit file, but so that you can start getting the maximum amount of funding. Now, I'm gonna tell you guys one more other thing that most people may not know. Actually, it's two, but I'm, I'll tell you one. If you have a Home Depot uh, department store card, and many people, because it's an easy easy card to get, 
and most people have them. And they may have like a thousand, two thousand on it. What you can do is when you go to go to Home Depot, you don't want to just get. Uh, this is why people are having this problem. They would go to Home Depot with their department store card, and they'll just start grabbing these uh, Visa, these prepaid Visa cards. Don't do that. Okay, don't do that. Uh, what you want to do is actually look for something you actually need uh, for maybe about 50 bucks or whatever. And then you grab uh, a couple hundred dollars worth of the uh, Visa um, prepaid cards and stuff. And then you can um, fund those, fund your pledge loan with that or your end rewards card with that as well. So if, if you're bootstrapping, there is also another way, but I won't say that here because that's for my uh, internal group. Uh, but I just wanted to give you all something. If you have a question about building your business credit, personal credit, uh, trying to get business credit funding, personal credit funding, Make sure you click the link in the description. And also, guys, if you really like the video, hey, send me a thanks. You know, I, I hope that I'm doing the right thing to help you all. But uh, give me a like. Share the video. Give me a thanks. I really appreciate it. Thank you.